Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is basically how to get um, the Minecraft registry, like the namespace of a block or and the type of block it is uh, from any mod. And we're going to get that through substring text. So we're going to be running it on server side. It will basically get the text that we need. And then we're going to basically turn it into something that we can actually use. So uh, for some examples why you would need this, uh, you might be able to set something up with a command instead. So sometimes Minecraft commands require certain things like set block. So if we do something like set block and then the coordinates, and then you'll see that we require the, uh, the namespace of the mod that or game that it's uh, coming from as well as the block type so in this case this would be really useful to actually insert this into the command if we were to um, basically do that and then we could basically set something like our test block I can't remember what I called this workspace um, doesn't really matter but Basically what you would do is you would basically just insert this after a space and then you would continue the command. So replace blah, blah, blah. So uh, there's also items. You can also get items as well. But um, yeah, let's just kind of demonstrate it. So if we right click on stone, this is on a Minecraft namespace. You can kind of see how it works. Uh, the stone basically has the block and then we have these uh kind of curly brackets indicating where our basically mod namespace is and then the type of block now if we were to go over and place down say this actually that's a little bit long there's a chest over here so if we right click on the chest you might notice a few different things uh, the first thing is we have the curly brackets still so that's a good indicator that we can use that and then we have a square bracket. Now this is where all the MBT data is uh, for the block itself. We know that it's a single type. Uh, the facing direction is north. All this isn't relevant, but we can still make sure to clean that up while we're doing it. Uh, the water, uh, water logged is true as well. And then it has a closing bracket. So we know that we basically can convert all this up to the bracket here for the curly bracket. The opening one and then what we're going to do is we're going to crop that all out so we just have the minecraft trap chest and then what we're going to do is we're going to target that other curly bracket crop all that out and then we're left with the uh, trap chest for the namespace and then we have if we want to go further than what we could do is we could remove that bracket there and we could just use the um, or that colon and then we could basically just get the trap chest part for the name and if you want to even go further than that you could do this similar method just by replacing any underscores and then you could basically have um, basically a name of the block without the underscore as well uh, I won't cover that part but uh, just to show that this works with any namespace not just uh, the minecraft length we can place down this one and we'll just clear that and then we can right click on it now I forget what the namespaces is uh, trim dynamic namespace so basically that's what I've called my namespace and then it's just test block so as you can see it works down up or works all the way throughout the um, thing that's obviously a lot longer namespace than Minecraft so it basically shows that it works so there's a uh, test block we could use that for our um, getting the block ID and stuff like that. All right, so with that being said, let's go into mCreator and then we'll take a quick look at the script that I put together and then we'll come back into game and we'll see how to get item, how the items and stuff like work, uh, items work. All right, so I've basically run it through just one procedure. Uh, this is when the player right clicks on a block. So it's global procedure just for demonstration. Now you will need to run this either on client or on server side. As far as I know, this won't work on client. Um, but the reason why you can't do both is because usually something isn't filled out with substring and it's easily messed up. Now generally want it on server anyways, because if it's on server, then it's going to work for both multiplayer as well as client. 
So that's going to be really important. So you're probably wondering, okay, how does this actually work? In Just, uh, what we're doing is we're just going to get the block that we right click on using this block right here, putting it to a block state local variable. So this is our local variable at the top here. And then what we're doing is we're basically creating text with that local variable for the block state, and then we're putting it to a string. So the string is also a local variable. We're passing it over there. We also have three number variables, uh, one called min string or substring, and then max substring. And we also have Minecraft substring. So we, you can name the Minecraft one whatever you want, but I just figured that would make sense as I was kind of demonstrating the Minecraft namespace. All right, so then I'm just printing out a message. This is actually not really required. I can just remove that if I wanted to. So what happens from there is we're testing if the string is not empty. So the reason why we're testing for that is so if there is no characters, uh, the substring won't mess up, okay? So if the character count is, like if we're testing over the amount of characters that the substring has, the game will crash. That's just unedible. It will happen that way. It's really annoying, but it's something that we have to work with. It's also the reason why we're running it just on server side as well, because uh, client side won't actually have the uh, same amount of characters or possibly none. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the other thing is what we're doing is we're setting the min substring. Now this is going to get our minimum bracket location. And uh, now because there's an opening and closing bracket, we'll be able to kind of figure out where that is located. And we can basically just crop that part out. Now what how this basically works is with our substring down here, it's easier to explain with our substring first because it's obviously how it's working. The local string, we're just putting our string in here for the uh, substring. And then what we're doing is we're getting our minimum substring and that will get the space between the characters, not the character itself. So keep that in mind. And then to position, so we're, we want to go one character or one space over from the character so we can actually get the character. So we need to add our min substring plus one and that will get the character that we're looking for. Now what this is going to do is it's going to run the length of the substring, but we can't run it the full length because this will go over the substring count. So what we need to do instead is we need to subtract one because we're adding one here. And what that will do is we'll only run to the end of the substring when this is goes to the, the high, like adds to one. So basically this will only go to the part where the just before the end of the, the length of the substring is, and then it will basically go ahead and add, and then it will be at the end indefinitely. So once it finds the, the bracket, we're testing for the bracket right there. Uh, this is the opening bracket for the curly part. And then what we're doing is if we find it, then we're gonna break out of this loop. What that means is it's going to just bypass this whole thing right here and we're going to move on to the next part. Now this is where the text was printing out, um, basically us finding the uh, curly bracket for the opening part, so we can delete that part, we don't even need it, but it was just for demonstration purposes. So what we're doing next is we're going to replace the substring, so we're setting the substring, we're replacing it, then we're going to get our zero position, which is what we started with, and then what we're going to do is we're going to increase that by our minimum substring plus one. Now that will make sure that it crops out the um, bracket here, the opening bracket that we actually set. And then what we're doing is we're just dragging over the empty chest text box right here. And we're just dragging it right onto that part right there. We're not even adding a space or anything like that. We're just dropping an empty block right there so we can basically remove the text that we don't want. After which, we're just saying that we want to replace it on the text, and then we're setting our substring, the same thing that we're, or our string, which is what we're actually setting here. And then we're just printing out the string, which gave, gave us that first part of the edit. So we're doing that for the maximum part as well. So basically the maximum uh, max substring, we're doing the same process, only with a closing bracket, so cur closing curly bracket. 
and then we're breaking out a loop we're doing this process again but this time what we're doing is something a little bit different I'm going to clean up the uh, message text so it's easier to see uh, what we're doing is we're going to our maximum substring without the plus and then we're going to get the length of the string so what this will do is it'll go from the uh, part where our beginning where we're testing for the bracket and then we'll go all the way to the end and that will clean up that entire section where we don't need the part for the um, all the sub data and stuff like that like the end of the um, block state information so that will clean all that part out and then what we're doing is this is part this part's optional obviously but if you want just to get the namespace for the the namespace and the mod then you just need this part right here if not if you want to actually get the block name and then you're going to need another one down here you're going to set the condition and then what it's going to do or the uh, substring starting position which is the zero and then what you're going to do is you're going to do the exact same process it's going to break out but this time what we want to test for is a colon so this is what's used in the namespace for basically separating the namespace and the actual block type so we want to make sure that we're testing for a colon instead of any bracket and then finally all we're doing is we're going ahead and we're going to get the or replace the substring from zero position which is where our namespace will be and then we're going to go ahead and set the um, ending position for the bracket and then we're going to crop out the bracket as well this is why we're using this one and then we're just removing all that section all right so i'm actually wrong with the having to do that whole substring text again all you really actually need to do is basically get uh, replace the string with the underscore with a space and then your substring and then that's going to replace all the underscores in that text so keep that in mind uh, it will basically happen to all the underscores so uh, then what we're doing is we're just printing it out to the thing so in our case um, I'm not sure if there's actually a block with more than one um, thing uh, activated rails. Let's see if we can't get the tooltip so we can actually see what we're doing here. So, trying to find in. Oh, hold on a sec. Uh, deep slate wall. So, we'll be able to right click on that and we'll see how if it works. So, we'll right click on that and then we'll go to console. And it should say, yep, deep slate wall. So, if we right click on this, I'll just bring that into text editor so I can kind of show you guys so it is quite small text uh, on 4k so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale this up to something more readable so as you can see that it has replaced the spaces between uh, the tile and deep slate and wall and deep slate with spaces so that that's basically worked uh, another thing that we can see in here is what we're basically holding in our main hand. So we didn't actually hold anything in our main hand. So what we're going to return is error. So in the console as well, where we've basically printed out the item stack, it's going to print out the format that the item stack is in. So we can see that just below the part where it's basically replaced the line, uh, it has basically printed out this message. So basically what it's saying is that we have one item in our inventory and that is error. So if you wanted to basically get the item stack, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to actually get the um, target the space instead that's between the two. And then you're only going to be able to get the actual block itself. So let's see if there's actually a namespace on it. I'm, I'm not sure if there is or not. So we'll see if we can't get our own custom one. And we'll see if we can't get the, um, if it prints out a namespace or not. I'm not sure if it will. No, it just goes and says test block. So... Yeah, that might be a problem if you were to wanting to test for a specific item, but it should work with block state. So again, this is what it would print out instead. So we only had one of those items in our hand. Now if we can, if we add more of those items to our hand, so say we'll just grab, 
33 of them. Right click on and then go back to console. It's going to say 33. So 33 test block. So yeah, it, it's probably not going to be useful for actually testing for items. But you can get the item name. So if you wanted to get the item name instead, then what you could do is just basically target the space using the substring. And then you could remove everything behind that uh, closing bracket for the substring and crop up the 33 or whatever stack that they have in their inventory. And then it will be just that. And if you wanted to re even go further, then you could just replace the part here and then it will replace that like that. So hopefully this has helped you with your tutorials and stuff or helped you with your mods. Um, I know that the namespaces like with the set block command, fill command, um, many things use the Minecraft namespace for the block and stuff. So hopefully that will help you do some more advanced things with the Minecraft commands and stuff. But uh, outside of that, all you really need is uh, the uh, this script right here. I'll provide that in the download for the workspace and the um, textures and assets for the uh, clown clown block that I created. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.